I mean, if I could describe this project and my sound as a whole, like, in a couple of words, I would say, like, it's what my mom used to play when she used to clean the crib, like, every Saturday morning, you know what I'm saying, but only in a hip-hop context. Ooh, ooh, excuse me. All right, so we're going to break down um, a joint I did um, off the project, the new project, Solitary Refinement, um, Instrumental Soundscape. This joint is called Vanish, you know what I mean? So we're going to break it apart. I'm not going to, I'm not going to redo, you know what I'm saying? Like every, every piece of it, you know what I mean? Because some things I don't even remember what I did, you know what I mean? I just press buttons until something sounds dope, you know what I mean? So the first thing I had was the sample. Let's see what we got here. You see? Now you see how I chopped it there? You know what I mean? Like just straight. I mean, most producers wouldn't go through the trouble of chopping it that much. You know what I mean? But I just, I like having control of the beat. You know what I mean? So I just... Even on that part right there, I even chopped it even more fine. Boom, so I had that piece. The other part I had was this part. This part right here. You know what I mean? Decapitated that joint. You feel me? So um, I had that piece. I had this piece. See, I'm a mess. I got piece. I got, I got pieces all over the place. Had that piece. Oof, excuse me. My manners are off today. My bad. So I had that piece. Now this was the hook. You know what I mean? This is tough because this isn't just like chopping instruments. This is her voice on top of the instrument. So when you're chopping it, you gotta be careful because you might cut off her voice, you know what I mean? So. Look at that, I couldn't even finish that. I couldn't even finish that. I had to shift octaves. And this has 49 keys, you know what I mean? So that goes to show you that you know, sometimes I take a half hour to chop a sample, you know what I mean? So I'm just, I'm a stickler for that stuff because I like to have like f just full control of the whole joint, you know what I mean? Boom, you know what I mean? So pretty much, yeah, like those were the samples, you know what I mean? So after that, what I did was I did the technique that they called low-end theory, you know what I mean, which was Large Professor, Q-Tip, they made it famous, you know what I mean, in the 90s, in the early 90s, where you take a sample, and if it has enough bottom to it, you filter, you filter out all the highs and the mids, and you keep the bass part, and you add whatever plugins you want to add to, to kind of like, um, just enhance the bass part, and that's your bass line. Because if you could take a bass line from a sample and use that, um, it's going to sound great. Because me, I'm not, I'm no keyboardist or whatever, or no bass player, you know what I mean, by no means, you know what I mean? So if the sample that I'm, that I'm chopping up, if it has enough bottom to it and I could do the low-end theory technique and use that as my bass line, um, then that's even better. Matter of fact, I look for samples like that because that's gonna make the dopest beats. And at the end of the day, it's about making the dopest beats. You know what I mean? So when I filtered out the bass line, here it is. Let me shut up so you can hear it. So that doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, that was pretty much from the sample. You know what I mean? I filtered out the highs and mids and kept the bottom. You know what I mean? And it worked well, you feel me? So 
I did it for each part. For each part of the sample, I took the I took the bottom part. I keep talking over the my bad. But um let's see. So, boom. I had I had the sample. I had um the bass parts, the filtered bass lines, you know what I mean? And um I was just looking for the right type of percussion drums to, you know what I mean, give it the feel. So I sampled this this break right here. Once I had the break looped, I mean, you know, I took a kick and layered it on top of it. So I took that kick, stacked it on top of the break, you know what I mean, to give it more, you know, power. Then I had like, you know, I added some extra percussions and stuff. I put a, a little clap on there. Boom. So, my bad if I keep looking over here because my laptop's over here. You know what I mean? I don't mean to be rude. But, um, yeah, so I added the clap, you know, those other percussions you hear, the, the ride, and um, maybe like one or two other hats in there, you know what I mean? So, with the, with the sample, with, this, with the bass line, with the filtered bass line, with the drum break, and with the other extra stuff, a cymbal. There you go, there's my symbol. I'm looking for my symbol. So boom, symbol, um, ride, extra hats, and a clap on top of the break. You feel me? So that's pretty much it. That's what I had, you know what I mean? So all together. DJ is the, the pioneer, of the, you know, that's the, that's the conductor. Uh, a lot of things I do are for the DJs. When I uh, mix things, I make sure that bottom is real heavy. Lo que pasa conmigo cada vez que te veo. I love Spanish ballads, man. What's this? Nelson Ney. Nelson Ney. I sampled Nelson Ney mad times. I got actually two of his albums. Where's the other one? Right here. This is the other one. What else I got here? Stevie Wonder. Stevie. I don't think I chopped anything from this one. Moving on, Roberto Carlos. Look, that's the one I wanted to sample. Did I sample it? Maybe I did. I don't remember. I got a lot of gems. I mean, I don't collect vinyl no more. You know what I mean? Because um, I was late in the game and my turntable broke and I never got another one. But the turntable I had was a wacky, wacky, cheapy, creepy one. Guadalupe Pineda. This is a gem right here. I sampled one joint, but there was a couple. Look, I wrote sample number two on it. I mean, what else? Rod Stewart. Now, this is a dope cover. Very dope cover. That's a dope cover. I remember I copped that just because of the cover. Los Galos. Dope, 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 man. Mostly all Spanish ballads, man. That's what I love to sample. That's like the core of my sound. I sample other stuff too, but this is my favorite. Julio Iglesias. No, I'm saying, Shan. Dope, man. Three Dog Night. I love the artwork, man. 
I mean, and you want to know what's dope? Like, you see the, the cover? And then inside, they got the behind-the-scenes joint. You see that they put the, the joint on, and they shot it right there. That's dope. Barry Manilow. Yeah, and this is actually 16 of Barry's greatest songs. This is the greatest hits joint, so. Yeah. <laughs> a little Kim white label. A white label. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Get in there. Get in there, buddy. Well, oh, snap. This is crazy. Because I don't even know what was in here because I haven't looked through these records in a while. In years, actually. And here I found... The Moto Technique signature. That's crazy. This is a while ago. This is when he put out uh, Revolutionary Volume 1. I went to see him. Peace from a Moto Technique. Moto Technique signature. That's crazy. Oh, man. That's, that's bugged out. <laughs> 